welcome to another up close video. Today's one is looking at designer's choice number 18, which is the Florals and Flutters layering frame die set. Um, it's a really gorgeous design, and there are tons of butterflies hidden in some of these frames. Actually, it's mostly just this frame. This one is a floral, then it's a butterfly, and then it's a floral again. Um, and I hadn't noticed how many butterflies there are hidden within this design. Um, past me will show you in my sample, I'll point out all the little butterflies on that frame as well. But it's a really lovely die set, lots of nice simple kind of layers and if you're looking at this thinking we've had a couple of stamp clubs recently that have had um, rectangles in them, I wonder if they'll coordinate. I thought I would show you. Um, because uh, they coordinate really nicely. There is one duplicate rectangle um, from stamp club number six, but then if you have stamp club number six and seven, you'll have three extra rectangles that could coordinate um, as like little skinny mats and layers and stuff to go with this set as well. So if I show you the rectangles that we're getting in this set, you're getting the big one and then you've got the next size down, which where you've got about half an inch between the two layers and then we've got the next size down and you even have this small little one as well which you can use to cut out your sentiments and as well as those ones you do also get a couple of scalloped ones in here as well um, which are basically the same size as that rectangle and then this one is just slightly bigger than the small rectangle so those are the rectangles that we're getting in this designer's choice die set but for those of you who like your stamp clubs and have number six which was the compassion and poppies you'll remember that we had a set of three nesting dies in here so the largest of these is just slightly larger than uh, the second one down and then this, the middle one of these is the same size so you're kind of getting a duplicate of that size of rectangle but then the smaller one is one smaller so you've got those extra layers to go with this one if you also have stamp club number six and then if you're also thinking well there was a, a rectangle with stamp club number seven as well which was the fairy one I love you very much um, I'll show you the size of that one too I just thought it would be interesting to show you how these all work together. So this one is basically a little bit smaller than the largest one from this designer's choice die set. So it's giving you a lot of different rectangles to work with if you have been collecting all of the online launches. You've got a few other sizes to make like skinny little frames that you could do with um, mirror card and stuff or to help you create like an aperture in a card so that you don't have to use skinny little pieces of foam tape to do some shaker cards and things like that so if you do have stamp club number six and seven you basically just got some extra nesting dies that are the exact same proportions so they've kept the proportion of the rectangle the same which is brilliant because a lot of the time with rectangles they're such weird sizes and um, they just don't coordinate nicely together and you, then you end up with one that's like longer and skinnier than another one that you have or shorter and fatter than another one that you have and it gets a little bit annoying sometimes but they have kept to the same scale which is really nice to know. So then if I go back to the actual die set that I'm showing you I'll tell you the sizes of these as well. So this largest rectangle I think it's actually a true A2 kind of size, a tiny bit smaller, is maybe four and an eighth by five and three eighths yeah so basically one eighth inch shorter of the two measurements of an actual A2 card so this would fit absolutely perfectly on an A2 card um, so for those of you who are in America or love your A2 cards this is a teeny bit bigger than my favourite size of rectangle because it is you know more of a true A2 kind of a size and then the next one down is about three inches by four and a quarter inches and then the next one is one and three quarter inches by three inches so that one would actually fit that way on there um, and then the tiniest little one straight edged one that you're getting is half an inch by just over one and three quarter inches so a nice decent little sized rectangle as well so hopefully that's helpful to some of you who love your rectangle dies 
so um, if I put all of these back on here so you can sort of see the whole die set as a whole as well um, but you can see how you can get that sort of pyramage or invitage kind of look if you want to use all of these layers together but also I know this is full of um, gorgeous intricate decorative dies but don't think you have to just do that with intricate decorative dies if you've bought like um, those pre die cut toppers that you can get sometimes you get like four of the same topper on a sheet you could use just the plain uh, rectangles to cut them out and create your own invitage and pyramage kind of effect or if you have any like um digital crafting cd-roms and you could print four of the same picture out again you can do that kind of technique with it if you love doing all of your nouveau inky techniques like i do you could um just use these as plain rectangles for trimming them down to go onto your cards or for um, creating channel shakers as well which uh, past me will show you a card with a channel shaker on too which I, is a it's a kind of shaker that I always forget about until I get a set of um, dies like this and then I'm like oh why do I always forget about a channel shaker and this uh, these two together work perfectly for a channel shaker on an A2 or an A6 kind of sized card. So that's why I decided to do one for this month's die set. But let's show you a proper up close look at these. So you can see these are packed full of detail all the way around. This one has got um, kind of like little daisies with foliage vines coming around some little leaves are in there as well on some of the vines and gorgeous little daisies on there so this one and this one are both florally sort of designs again there's more sort of like daisy kind of flowers this one is more filled in I think there's slightly more empty space in the outside one and this is more sort of packed full of flowers rather than having the little vines and stuff in between and then this middle rectangle that you'll see up close on one of the cards die cut out um it doesn't look like much does it it's hard to tell that there are loads of butterflies in there but there are loads hidden within this frame there's like different ones on the corners there's a, like a solid one here a half one another solid one um, a solid one that's got some deboss detail in it another one another one there's loads of butterflies hidden within that frame there and then right in the centre, I love this little die, I used it on a card just cutting loads of these um, with the outside edge on so it kind of makes like a little pennant banner piece that you can uh, string along some baker's twine and you actually have three different butterflies in there so you can either just use this piece to cut out some extra butterflies to add over the top of butterflies on this frame or just to add a scattering on your card or to... Um, create shaker elements for a shaker card as well and then but you could also use it as an actual element as well either using it with the straight cutting edge or with the scalloped cutting edge and there's a little stitch die in here as well but those butterflies they're all different there's three different butterflies and they're just so tiny and delicate but they're really really useful for um especially kind of covering up a smudge or a um you know an accidental uh, accidental mark on your card you can just add a little tiny butterfly over the top to hide it so that is the the main gorgeous set of dies and then you've got this little rectangle here which is practically the same size as this uh, straight edged rectangle but you've got the scalloped edge around it and then the next die in is actually just a stitched die so you could use that just in your card to create a little stitched um design you could cut multiples of them to give you um i suppose kind of like um a gridded sort of pattern that would maybe look a little bit like you'd use an embossing folder to create the kind of design or you can use it with the sentiment and um you then just get that gorgeous like stitched look for a die and the stitched edge actually fits inside the straight edged rectangle as well as the scalloped edge one so you can mix and match those depending on what look that you want and you can also um, what I did on one of my cards I'll show you later is I cut this rectangle out of a mirror card and then I cut the sentiment with the stitched one um, but then instead of using the rectangle to cut this one out I just used my trimmer to trim quite closely or I use scissors actually but um, just trim quite closely to the stitch lines and then you could mat and layer that onto the die cut rectangle and you had like a skinny little border around the edge so there's lots of ways of using um, these in different 
configurations with each other basically. I mean you might even get a tiny scallop poking out the edge if you use the scalloped one behind this one as well uh, for another different look. Then um, another word wise, I didn't actually use this one, but it says all the best. So if you wanted more of um, a portrait sentiment to go in the centre of this gorgeous flourishy um, butterfly flowery design, you could use all the best. Or if you want the landscape, you can use the, um, I didn't tell you what it says, it just says birthday wishes, that one. Um, and then again, you can mix and match this one with the straight edged rectangle or the stitching or the scalloped edge because they are the same sized little panel so they'll both work in conjunction with those then extra words that you also have you've got this little word die that says forever and it's really lovely and delicate um, I actually stacked two on top of each other on one of the cards that I'll show you and they are really easy to line up together but really fine detailed kind of a word die and you also get the extra bubble on that one too and then the other two words that you get are two little tiny words that fit inside that smallest rectangle or the scalloped one and you can use them with the little stitched rectangle as well which just gives you the stitching and then you use whichever cutting edge you want and you get celebrate and congrats they're both upside down but this one says celebrate and this one says congrats and again they're a lovely gorgeous little font they're really nice and modern scripty kind of a font um, and I use them quite a few times on the cards that I'll show you later then as well as um you know having these words and the butterflies that coordinate with these little dies you've also got an extra one which is a little flowery design so you could do um a card that uses tons of the same kind of die cut you could do a kind of brickwork sort of card but mix in different sentiments the butterflies and the little floral design as well and then you've also got this little one which is kind of like um, a double-ended tag sort of design which I think the words would actually fit inside mm, you would have to cut both of the dies individually but I think you could fit the words inside that die as well and you have the outside cutting edge for it and this inside piece is really lovely with the little piercing dots and like the half flowers on either end and then finally the last one is this more skinny kind of rectangle design which has some gorgeous flowers in there as well really kind of like daisy sort of flowers and I actually use that multiple times uh, down the side of a card to kind of give a sort of border element but the actual length of this rectangle is slightly shorter than um, this rectangle this sort of um, medium sized rectangle here so you could actually sort of layer this up probably three times across that one for a different kind of design as well or you could use it to cut an aperture inside that one again for some other kind of design that you might want to do so um I think this is a really nice set because it's got so many different rectangles in there and again this one for any of your stamped sentiments that you might have um or like alphabet stamps or if you've got some of the stamp clubs I'm sure some of the stamped sentiments would fit on there or even for mounting your word dies on as well if you've got letter dies um, you could use this as a backing plate and add all of your letters to that to spell your word or you can actually use like a conjunction of um, the scripty word die and the block words and like build them up onto this and then add this to your card as well but I think um, these kind of dies are very useful to have in your stash really because there's so many bits and pieces that you can do with them whether you want to use them with the gorgeous decorative dies or not you've got lots of different options which is great so um i will pass you on to past me to um show you all of the samples that i created with this die set so I've got five samples to show you using this month's designer's choice. Um, a couple of them I just finished doing and I was doing, um, a, I wanted to do a couple of cards just showing you how you can make the most of like just one die from the die set and cut it loads and loads of times. So I thought I might as well do a couple of cards like this considering uh, you've kind of got to run this die through the machine like 16 times to get enough to do the background. So I thought I might as well run through a load of these little butterfly ones as well so I could get a couple of different ideas showing you the sort of multiple use of a smaller die. So this one, the actual small die, I've probably already shown you this, has like a little... Um, rounded rectangle hole in the top of it with the three butterflies below it. I'm not 100% sure if it was mostly intended to just be a die to cut out the little tiny butterflies which you can then like scatter all over your projects 
and they're all different actually I don't know if I've got one of each of them there uh, but they are actually all different shaped butterflies um, but they're really gorgeous tiny little ones and you could also use them in your shaker cards as well I have done a shaker card but I used butterfly confetti um, because I did that card before I had done these cards so if I'd thought about it I could have done them the other way around and then used these in the shaker but I didn't think about it at the time but anyway um, with that little die you have those gorgeous little um, butterflies that fall away but this is like the piece if you cut the outside rectangle with the interior piece for the butterflies you get a little kind of um, banner like this and then obviously because it's a banner I was thinking well you can do some kind of bunting thing so I've just taken some purple baker's twine and sort of woven it in and out of them I what I did to because um if you threaded them all on and then tried to stretch it across the card they'd all go behind each other and not be in the right places where you wanted them to be so what I did was I stuck the baker's twine to the back of my card panel first on one side and then threaded them on from the other end uh, sticking them down as I went so that I could kind of get the rough higgledy piggledy sort of pattern that I wanted and I also changed whether I came through from behind the hole or in front of the hole as well just to make them lay down a little bit differently and I also backed them with a piece of white card and then replaced in some of the butterflies so there are four different colours that I've cut them out of uh, one is the um, satin pearlescent card and all the other ones are just the textured craft perfect so in the satin one I pieced back in all three butterflies one from each colour of the craft perfect and then in all of the textured craft perfect ones I just pieced in one of the um, satin mirror card butterflies back in just to give it a little bit of difference and then I also went in with a sparkly pen and just coloured in one of each of the butterflies on um, the textured ones just to give it a little bit of extra you know difference between the butterflies and stuff um, and I think it looks really cool actually it's obviously it's a little bit time consuming because you had to cut I did 12 on this card I think of these so there was three of each of the four colours but um you know, if you're die cutting, I don't know, loads of panels for another project or you're batch making some cards, just have this little die there ready with a load of little pieces of cards. You can keep cutting them and then before you know it, you'll have cut all the bits you were meant to be cutting for a different project and then you'll have all of the pieces to make a card like this or something like this as well. So um, it's quite nice to have little small dies to fill up the space on your plate and then you can make some cool cards out of them just using those small elements. And then the sentiment I did congrats on this one, just using the straight edged rectangle to cut it out and then I stuck it onto the mirror card and just trimmed around it with a little border so that I've got like a matte and layer. But you could also use the scalloped one that's in um, the die set which I've used on a different card so I'll show you that as well. But I thought that was a cool way of just using that tiny little butterfly kind of a die. Then this one is also, you know, using small dies lots of times. So this is a gorgeous little um, taggy, bannery, sentiment holder kind of um, a die that's in there with like little half daisies on each of the ends. And I really like the way it's cut off as well. It's got like that half a hexagon sort of end to it. Um, and I cut 16 for this one, so I had four different colours, and I cut four of each of the four different colours. And then, to be able to cover the entire background, if you look at the pattern, it, every other row has a whole uh, dark purple and a whole uh, mirror card purple, but I switch them round each time. And then in between that, you've got the two lighter purple colours, but you'll notice I've put a solid one, or a full one, in the middle, and then this is actually one of them cut in half, so, you know, you're, you're building up the whole pattern and doing that cool offset kind of a look but you're not having to cut you know three for this one row you're just cutting two and then you're snipping one in half um, and I think that just makes it go a little bit further and to do this one so I didn't have to stick down all those little fiddly well they're not really that fiddly but around the little flower pieces is kind of a little bit fiddly um, I just stuck them straight onto some double sided adhesive sheets and then I put some ice white glitter over the top to cover the rest of the adhesive as well but you could also because you had the sticky on there and you were cutting all of these out of different colours if you were good and you kept all your little pieces you could have paper pieced um, the little petals back in from opposing colours of the little die cuts as well but again I, I was, wasn't really thinking about that at the time 
but that would have been a cool extra step to make this background like a little bit more um, intricate and involved and the little nouveau embellishment tool would have been great for picking up those tiny pieces as well and then for the sentiment on this one I just used the birthday wishes using the actual word die the um, just the stitched rectangle die and then the plain rectangle edge as well and then I stuck it onto some of the mirror card with some uh, 3D foam and then I just trimmed around the edge to give that tiny little extra mat for it as well but again there is a scalloped one in there too so you could have had a larger edge around it with the little scalloped detail on too then these three cards are actually my sped up video so these three are in my sped up video you can see I was in a purple mood so I thought I'll do them all purple because I was in a really purpley mood when I was doing this video and I thought well I might as well just carry on with all the same colours of card that I was using but these two don't use any inks with these ones um, I wanted to do some inking so the backgrounds on these I, I usually always use the um, smooth white 300 GSM cardstock from Craft UK um, but I thought I fancy trying to ink blend onto some textured card. I was using hammered card the other day in a video um, and I thought why not do it onto the textured white, bright white craft perfect card. So I started with a piece of that, cut it into four and then used three pieces of it. And then I was using shaded lilac and dusty concord distress oxides and then my purple um, nouveau large blending brush and I've just done that on the bottom of them so that I know what colour the brush is. I mean you can kind of tell because as you're taking the brush in and out it does get a little bit dirty on the bottom but that would just wipe off but you know you can easily tell if you're using lots of colours which one's which but I, I thought I'd just label them just in case I um, ever forget or can't figure out which one goes back with what. And then in the background, um, I wanted to, I've been dying to use more of the colour trend again. And in the Easter cards I did, um, I don't know, it's probably like a week ago when you see this, maybe two weeks ago. Um, I deliberately did a pastel colour tone and then none of the Nouveau stuff from the colour trend was going to go with the idea that I had in my head. So I didn't end up using it. But um, I remembered we had that gorgeous purple pixie wings glacier paste. So I brought it in for these cards. And I was using this stencil, I can't remember the name of it, but I'm sure I saw it on the website the other day, so I'm pretty sure they still sell it. But it's a gorgeous one, this one. It's kind of like um, overlapping daisies, or you could use it on a mermaid card, because it kind of looks like the little um, shells as well. And it's got perfect places for Nouveau drops if you wanted to do that on it as well. So I really like this stencil. Um, and so for that, I was then using the Glacier Paste with a mini ink blending tool with one of the foams on there and then just pouncing it through that. And I was actually using the Magnetic Crafters platform to hold my stencil down and I was also using it to hold the card down while I was ink blending as well. Um, and then I wanted to show again a few different ways of using some of the dies. So this one was taking that longer rectangle which has a kind of like... Um, flowery design in it they're all sort of like half flowers or part flowers uh, with a few little vines holding them together and I just thought it was a nice cute little die that you could use in again in, in a, like a multiple way to create a sort of background as well I think I've used three different colours and cut them each three times so that's only nine times through the machine and actually cutting all of the bits and pieces for this card I think I then only had to cut like four extras uh, like run it through the machine but when you're doing such a small die you can just sort of run it through a tiny bit and then run it back again rather than running your whole plates through which is great um yeah so this one I just did all of those little strips of dies so you could have done a similar thing um interchanging these kind of dies you could use these ones on a card like this and then you'd need less of them because they're a longer rectangle or you could have used these smaller rectangles on this kind of a card as well depending on what sort of look you're going for and then to finish this one off I just used the little congrats die with the uh, little stitched rectangle around it but this time I actually just trimmed around it I didn't use the um, straight edge rectangle around it I just literally used my straight edge of my scissors and trimmed around so that it was closer to the stitch lines than if I'd used the die um, and yeah I think this one turned out really pretty and then the second one in this set I used the frame in there so 
uh, when I was looking at the dies, I probably have already told you uh, some of this, but when I was looking at the dies, I knew the name of the set was Florals and Flutters, but I hadn't really, because obviously the die is like backwards and, um, you know, you've got solid bits and empty bits and it's kind of hard to tell what it looks like, I hadn't noticed that there were so many butterflies in these gorgeous frames, but like there's one on the corner, there's one here, there's one here, there's one under there that I've covered up, one under here, there's one here, another one, another one, another one, another one, there's loads of them all around the whole frame, uh, which is really, really lovely, and you could even go in and colour them if you wanted to as well, to um, make them stand out, you could use your alcohol pens to colour them, you could use a glitter pen just to colour them in like a silhouette style, or I've also just added on a few of the tiny little butterflies that came out of that little die as well just for a different kind of look and I've layered up two together here and then put the satin mirror card behind and then for the sentiment I did a similar thing to this card you can see the difference so this card was using the birthday wishes the stitched edge die and the straight edged rectangle but on this one I used the um, the birthday wishes, the stitched edge rectangle, but then I just used my scissors to trim around it and then I used the actual plain edge rectangle to cut the mirror card to go behind it. So you can see the kind of difference that that gives, um, you know, with the sort of width of white border around the edge as well, uh, which is, you know, it's good that you can actually just use your scissors to cut around it because it's just a basic rectangle or you could use your guillotine or your paper trimmer as well if you'd rather. Uh, but I thought that card was really nice. And then I haven't done a channel shaker card in a while, so I thought I'd show you that one. Because we've got like the nesting rectangles um, dies in there, I thought it would be nice to show you a, um, a channel shaker card. I was originally going to leave the channel white, but then I really liked the... Um, the fall away piece that had come out of it so I decided to try and recess it back in there it, it wasn't a hundred percent lined up properly but um I don't think you can tell too much especially because I put the white stitching on the acetate it kind of disguises that you could see a little bit of white around it and then for the confetti in this one I was using the purple organza butterflies um, I really love these ones they're one of the originals actually they were in one of the original sets of confetti um, and then I also used some clear glass microbeads in there as well, just to help the confetti move around. And then for the sentiment, um, that is using the Celebrate with the scalloped edged rectangle. So it gives a different look. On this one, you see, I just matted it onto a piece of um, the mirror card and trimmed around it. And then that is using the die behind it. Or on this one... I've used the stitched rectangle and then trimmed around it so you can get different looks just from these tiny sentiments with the way you use the dies together and, and layer things up as well which is nice um, and then I just used the forever as well because uh, you get that gorgeous little scripty die in there so I stuck two together and with the celebrate I stuck two together just to make them a little bit more prominent um, but yeah that's the, um, the third card that will be in the sped up video so, I hope you enjoyed this up close video looking at designer's choice number 18, which is the florals and flutters layering frame. Um, I've really enjoyed working with it, and um, I think there's loads of little dies in there that are going to be really, really useful, especially the nesting rectangles. And um, I mean, future me will probably tell you. Uh, if they kind of coordinate with another die set that's been out recently as well. I haven't actually looked into that yet, but I'm sure when I film the first bit of the video, I'll have a look and see if the rectangles go with any other ones that have been in, um, like the Stamp Club one recently with the fairies. I think they might coordinate uh, with that, so I will have told you that at the beginning of the video if that is the case. But I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got a few ideas of how to use maybe uh, these dies if you get hold of them or maybe other dies in your stash that you might have. Um, you know, a few different ways of how to use smaller dies in multiples um, on a card to give like an overall background or to give a focal kind of element to a card or to enhance um, an inky background as well. And also you might not have seen a channel shaker card before and I think they're a really cool kind of card to make. You basically make the, um, I didn't say this before so I'll just say it now, but um, you make it as if it's um, a complete shaker. So you're just putting it all together as if that was just a solid rectangle shaker panel, but 
Um, instead of just putting foam tape around the edge, you can also put foam tape underneath this central panel because obviously you stuck that on top so you're not going to see. And then all of the shaker stuff, you're saving shaker stuff because it's just going around the middle. But also because there's foam tape behind here, some of it will sort of stay in the upper channel as well. So when the card's standing, it doesn't all drop to the bottom, which is nice. So um, I really do like channel shaker cards and I should remember to do them more as well. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this up close video and thank you so much for watching, especially if you stayed right till the end. I'll make sure all of the links to the um, Designer's Choice die set are below the video and they are affiliate links. So if you do use them to purchase anything, I will get a small commission of however much you've spent on the website, but it's at no extra cost to you and I really, really do appreciate you using them. So thank you to everybody who has ever used them or if you do use them for this die set as well. I really do appreciate it. Um, and thank you so much for watching the video and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye!